friends, welcome back to my channel. So as here, I'm here to do another review of 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. I enjoyed last night's episode. I enjoyed it. It was a whole lot of cussing and fussing and crying, child. We had no fight, but I could have wished that we had a fight. But anyway, all right. Let's start off with uh, Weeble Wobble and Jizz. Honey, this is a whole mess. I want to know how much time has lapsed from the time they came home from Brazil to now. Because according to Colt, okay, him and Jess have done had knocked down, drag out fights. Things have not been happy. They done broke up several times. So how long y'all been home? Colt said it has been horrible. Okay, but he still loves Jess, and he wants her to come to Vegas. See, if she comes to Vegas, then everything will be okay. Okay? He'll kiss her head. He'll give her a little kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy, and everything will be fine. Okay? Obviously, Jess, she has her own issues. Okay? She, she has jealousy issues. She is jealous when it comes to her weeble wobble child. Can't nobody have him but me. So, Colt, let it be known, some secrets this episode. So, he's talking to Jess, all right? And he is telling Jess, listen, I miss you. I love you. How about you come to Vegas, okay? And so, she was like, I don't know about that, Colt. And he was like, I know about it. Don't worry about it. You need to come here. We need to see each other. This long distance is killing me. So she was like, where would I stay? He was like, well, you're going to stay here. You're going to stay here. Y'all remember that. Weeble Wobble said you're staying here. So Jess was like, what about your mama? He was like, don't worry about mama. Let me deal with mama. Okay, this is my house. Okay, you'll stay here with me and these 75 cats and my mama and everything's good. I don't know. <laughs> Just putting on, y'all. But anyway, she decides to come over um, and see Colt. So, Colt, let it be known that while they were in one of these breakups, that he was lonely. He was lonely. He said I was lonely. We had an argument. We broke up. And so I started talking to other women. Who? Who are these women that are talking to Cole? I don't understand. Are these women who are women who have seen the show and they are just, you know, fans? Or are these just actual women? I'm confused. What is it about Colt that would make you say, you know what, that's a number I need to get. That's a man that I need to get under. What? Because I don't see it, but Colt be pulling the women, though. He be pulling them. So he says, Lord, that got stuck to my mouth like a vacuum. So anyway... So, Cole says that while um, him and Jess was broken up, he done started communicating with other women. Child, a whole mess. So, he, he has to tell her that. That's the secret. Okay? He, he didn't tell her that. He also haven't told her that he done slept with Vanessa. Let's not forget that. So, he goes to ice cream with his mommy. Okay? His ice cream or sorbet or sherbet or freezy or whatever that was looked bomb. I was like, is that a watermelon ride that they just stuck on the side of it? <laughs> Honey, it looked good. And she had a little um a little ice cream or yogurt or whatever, but the outside of it was rice krispie treats. Is that what that was, y'all? Mm. Good God almighty. So anyway. They start talking, and of course, Colt has to tell his mom that he has invited Jess to come over um, to stay with them while she comes over to the United States. 
And we already know, honey, Debbie. Debbie is not for it. Debbie said, are you serious? After the way she cut a shot over there in Brazil, you still carried on this relationship? And so he was like, I love her, mom. I miss her, mom. Yeah, have I made some mistakes? Sure. But this is who I want to be with. So she was like, you going to tell her everything you've been doing, the carrying on you've been doing? He was like, I'm going to tell her. She said, you going to tell her over Skype? Or you going to wait till she get over here to tell her some of the things that you need to be telling her? And he was like, well, I'm going to tell her when she gets over here. Debbie drops a bombshell. Debbie says, you going to tell her about Vanessa? Now, see, this is when I thought that Colt had, had, had told Debbie that he slept with Vanessa. No, uh-uh. Debbie said that Vanessa is at the house. Colt said that Debbie was either having a problem with her boyfriend or a roommate, whatever. Okay? She needed a place to lay her head. She ain't got no other friends, y'all. She ain't got no family members. So she goes to Colt and Debbie's house to lay her head. Who does that? Who does that? For someone that you really don't know. Yeah, you done slept with them. Yeah, you cat said it, but you don't really know him. To be said, oh sure, I, I can stay with you. So Vanessa is staying with Colt and Debbie and Colt has invited Jess to come and stay with them too. What's wrong with Colt? <laughs> when he knows Jess cannot stand Vanessa. So when Jess gets there, does she supposed to say, Hi, Vanessa, give me a hug. Hi. Honey, she threw shoes at you when she found out that you had been communicating with her. When she found out that you was cat sitting. What's she going to throw at you when she see Vanessa? Oh, God. Colt is a whole disaster. Let's see how this turns out. So we going to have Colt, Jess, Vanessa, and Debbie all up in the same house. Woo, that should be interesting. What do y'all think about that, John? What do y'all think about that, child? Let's move on. All right, let's talk about Tanya and Sidney. I'm going to talk about them this week, y'all, because it was a very interesting conversation. I have always said I don't understand Tanya and Sinjin relationship. I don't see them together. I see them very disconnected. They were disconnected last time they were together. Okay. But this season, they are so disconnected. It's like, what is, why are y'all even? So, they're still in South Africa. The family is getting ready to have a good old South African barbecue child. Did y'all see that meat? It looks so good. I was like, you better cook it, Sinji. All right? So, the family is set down, and then they start bringing up America, and then Sinji has some word or two about America. You know, he's homesick. Bottom line, he homesick. He wants to be in South Africa. But see, Sinjin, there's your problem. You didn't marry a South African. You married an American. See how that works? Okay. So, of course, Tanya, she says, look, South Africa is cool. But y'all have a whole bunch of racism. Y'all have a whole bunch of poverty. Not that America don't have that, but not to the extent that you have. My sister-in-law here, and I'm the first American she has ever met. I grew up around diversity. I grew up around different culture. And see, that's why the United States is the best thing. <laughs> Other than this South Africanness. So, of course, a child got brought up. Y'all, I don't know how a child got brought up. A child, when someone said something about a child, it was all like a pot of dead bones. So, Sinjin had a flipping side. So, 
you know, Sinjin, he had a whole flippant comment and, you know, I'm putting comment talking about, oh, if it is going to be a child. Tanya goes off. Tanya goes off and they get into it in front of his family. His mom is there, his stepdad's there, the brother's there, the sister's there, and they are screaming at each other. Sinjin, on one hand, says that, listen, it ain't all that's cracked up to be over there in America. Okay. It's not that great. And what make it really, really insufferable is who I'm married to. <laughs> he didn't say that, Joe. But he kind of did. <laughs> he said, tell you getting on my nerves. Everything is getting on my nerves. I just can't stand it. I'm homesick. And then tell you was like, oh, so you homesick, huh? Oh, so you homesick. Well, you wasn't really homesick when I met you. It was all good when I met you. But now all of a sudden, you don't want to have children. When you knew from jump what I wanted out of this relationship. You knew that I wanted kids. You knew that I had goals that I was trying to achieve. And you said that you was on board with That it was me and you, Bonnie and Clyde. But now all of a sudden, something's wrong. Now, you're not going to be sitting up here in front of your family making it out like I'm the bad guy. You ain't going to be doing that. So here comes Sinjin. We done said way into, you know, the United States, the problem, you know, how South Africa is different from the United States to children and honey. Now we done led into why Sinjin ain't got no job. Meanwhile, here comes that dad. Okay, the stepdad is like, well, wait a minute now. Y'all need to calm down. Okay, maybe Tanya does have some points. But Sinjin, he's always need to plant his feet. You know, he always need that little push. Then here comes Sinjin's mom and her two cents. She says that she understands what Tanya is saying, but her boy is correct. Tanya is coming off a little too harsh. She's coming off a little too strong. You got to let Sinjin be. What is it with these moms calling these grown men? Come on now. So Sinjin, he's going off. He is just talking and talking. His voice is raising. And here's Tanya. Bring it down a notch. Bring it down a notch. I know you ain't. Bring it down a notch. I don't know who you think you're dealing with. Bring it down a notch. See, you up here. You bold up here around your family up in South Africa. You bold up here. But I'm going to need for you to... That's what you do. <laughs> and honey, they get into it. They are screaming, they are yelling, they are talking. It is just a mess. Sinjin gets mad. He, you know, has a temper tantrum. He walks off, okay? So here is Tanya, very awkward. Everybody said there, honey, Tanya never stopped eating, did she? Tanya was like, he think I'm playing. I ain't playing. I ain't playing. I got me up here trying to show up in front of his back. Honey, that took him out. I was like, Tanya, you better eat. You better eat your feelings. That's what you do. <laughs> so, Sinji comes back, and um, they have some more words. I mean, it didn't really settle down, even though the daddy was trying to, you know, settle it down. The mama was throwing in her two cents. Honey, they were going at it. So, Tanya is saying that she has given Sinji plenty of time. She has given Sinjin more time than most. Okay. Sinjin said that he was going to do this. Sinjin said that he was going to do that, but he never goes through. Bottom line is, she wants Sinjin to get a job. She wants Sinjin to work. Okay. They need something. He needs something to do. So Sinjin says that he's a free spirit. He's a free spirit. And he's not going to work until he finds something that is suitable for him. Now, let me ask you.
count some friends when a 30 year old grown man says he's a free spirit what does that mean to you all well to me lazy you are 30 year old man now tanya i got my own problems with tanya gets on my nerve too y'all but Sinjin is a 30 year old man who don't have a job. Who don't have a job. You met an American woman. See, again, we go through this every week. They expect this whirlwind romance like it's a movie or something. It's not. This is your real life. You come over to the United States, what did you expect? Then he brought up that he just not got his work permit. And, you know, now he can really, you know, focus on working. And so Tanya said, some of the things that I'm telling you, you don't need a work permit. Okay? Now, mind you, Tanya, she's not working either. You know, she was in that car wreck and she, you know, broke her leg. So she's out of work. But before that, she was bartending. We know that Sinjin went to that interview and, you know, he didn't get the job. But it's like, what do you expect out of this? Are you just going to stay at home? You're not going to work? Is that is that what you, your goal is, Sinjin? So then they go back and forth and they fuss and, honey, this time Tanya gets up from the table. She leaves. And so the dad is like, y'all are a hot mess. The dad said, how are you supposed to have a marriage and y'all are acting like this? And then here comes Sinja, marriage? <laughs> you think I'm going to stay with someone that's acting like that? So here comes back Tanya. It was so funny. Tanya says, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I apologize. You know, we are fussing in front of family. We just couldn't up. I'm sorry, but I ain't going to stay here. I'm not going to stay here and listen to your son. Okay? He's saying one thing and doing another. He know how I feel. He know how I feel. And she was like, I'm out. And y'all, when I tell you, she grabbed that plate. <laughs> how did that tickle me? She was like, get my food, honey. I was like, tell you, you better get that food. That is so me. I would have grabbed that food. I would be like, think I'm not going to eat this food. This food's delicious. <laughs> so she goes into somebody's bedroom, child. And so here comes, you know, Sinjin. Sinjin is trying to talk to her. And he was like, how are you doing? You doing okay? After they done had a, a, a fight. In front of the parents and the brother and the sister. And so she's like. <laughs> she was turning that steak up. So. Again, the disconnect. The disconnect. Sinjin, you're going to have to either get a job or you need to stay in South Africa. I mean, that's the bottom line. Because if you think that Tanya is not going to let you have it every chance that she gets about you being free spirit, even Tanya said, Tanya said, I'm a free spirit too. How you think I met you? I met you being a free spirit and it was all gravy. I done come in, I done moved into your place, I done worried your roommates, your roommates didn't like me. <laughs> but she said, when I found you, what was you doing? When I found you, you were months behind on your rent. And so I had to think about that, Joe. When she said that he was two months behind on the rent, I was like, yeah, two other people living there. There was three people living in the apartment 
basically told Sinjin that he was a bomb when she met him. She got him. She got him over to the United States. She cleaned him up, trying to make him a little bit of a better man. And now he wants to hop, skip, and jump back to South Africa. She said she ain't putting up with it. It is what it is. It, it, Sinjin said that he's not structured. He's a free spirit. You can't rush him. Whole mess. These two are whole mess. Sinjin, you had a fit when she said that 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 you were not her soulmate. Remember that, y'all? That was a perfect opportunity to say bye. You didn't. You carried on. And you went on and you married this girl. You said that it was a woman of your dreams. How much you loved her. And now that you're home, it's a totally different ball game. Y'all are fussing. Y'all are arguing. You was arguing in the United States, but now since you're around your people, it has gotten worse. What are you two going to do? Because y'all are just... They're exhausting, y'all. I cannot talk about Tanya and Sinjin. I don't even understand why they're even together. It makes no sense. That's it, y'all. What do y'all think about Tanya and Sinjin? Y'all think Sinjin need a job? Tanya, honey, as soon as your leg heals, honey, it's time for you to get back to work too, honey. And get back to work, start making them herbal, um... Uh, teas or herbal soaps or whatever you was trying to make when you went to that resort. Let's move. Child, let's talk about Andre and Elizabeth. <laughs> so, Elizabeth's mother, sister, and stepdad has come to town. And everything is fine. Her sister is complaining right off the bat. But hey, they're there. All right. And it's time for everyone to meet up. And they meet up. And I'm assuming either the mother made it or it was catered, whatever. But it, again, was a spread. It was a spread of food. All right. Everyone is having a good time. You know, everyone was getting along. You know, here comes, you know, that sister talking about, Ew, what is that? And it was some type of, you know, bread with some, you know, what was it, pork fat on it. You know, she was like, oh, I'm not going to eat that. Okay, don't eat it. There was plenty of things on the table that you could shove in your mouth, you ungrateful biddy. So, you know, the night went well. Okay, Libby was very proud of Andre. Very proud. Andre behaved himself. You know, he didn't, you know, say anything out of the way. Everyone had a good time. Now, it's the next morning. And this is where I have a problem with Elizabeth's family. Now, see... Elizabeth's dad and brother, I was rooting for you. I was actually bragging about you. I actually said I liked you too. <clears throat> I wanted Charlie to bust Andre in the neck. But see where I get, see where I get when I say I like somebody and I always slap me in the face. I won't quit saying it. So they are sitting there, and they are talking about the food and, you know, just how gross it was and how disgusting and it was trash. And then Elizabeth's dad says, oh, well, you know, it's peasant food. It's peasant. Because, see, that sister had made the comments that it was scraps. It just looked like that, you know, it was just scraps. And she's not going to eat scraps. Oh, my God. Horrible. Just horrible. Whether Andre's mama made it or not, or whomever. Maybe it was a, a collective deal. The fact is, is that whomever went out their way to make this food for you all. To show you some type of kindness, okay? To show you this is what we eat. No, you're not going to like 
everything, okay? You're, you're not going to do it. But you don't have to sit there and just bash them and talk about pens and food. Honey, they, they, they have money, ain't they? Oh, so you up here? So you up here. Oh, okay. Now, see, y'all remember when Elizabeth's dad and brother first got there, how he was bragging about how Andre's mom made this spread and how great it looked. And he was just so amazed that she made it in that little kitchen and how great the, you know, hospitality has been. Now, that's the went from that to peasant food and, you know, oh, we can't eat that. Just so rude. Tacky. You're tacky. I, I, that just, that scene bothered me. It really, really bothered me. Your beef is with Andre. Andre's mom and dad haven't done anything to you, especially that mama. That mama has been over backwards to be kind to you and your ungrateful son. And your silly, ungrateful um, daughter. And then don't get me started on that mom. So they're just talking, just bashing. Oh, that just, oh, that just bothered me. So, of course, here comes Elizabeth's brother bringing up the fight. And then here comes that sister like, oh my God, oh my God, what? Why, how dare he? After all dad has done for him, he's doing that and Libby, and he's talking to him like that. Oh, we need to get to the bottom of this. So, of course, um, they have this plan where um, Elizabeth's brother and dad is meeting up with, um, you know, Andre's friend, Marcel. The one that knows Marcel, the one that knows all the information about Marcel and Ireland Child. I'm so tired of hearing about this. And then we have Libby and the mom who's going to meet up with um, Elizabeth at, to pick out a dress for the wedding. As they were getting up, here comes Elizabeth's brother talking about, let's find some real food. Then here comes Elizabeth's sister. Yeah, this is gross. This is disgusting. He was like, it's trash. I mean, were y'all bothered by that scene or was it just me? How did they tip me off? So then here we have them at the little wedding dress shop. And, you know, Elizabeth is looking for a traditional dress that they usually wear. But she also had a, have a dress that she brought, you know, from home. So they're sitting there. She's in the changing room. And here is Elizabeth's sister and that mama and Elizabeth's, you know, sister-in-law. So Elizabeth's sister is like, what is her name? Jen. Jen is like, you know, tell us a little bit more about Andre. Has Andre always been like this? We can't stand him. So what do you think about him? So here, here comes the sister-in-law. The sister's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I'm Helen Keller over here. What you say what you say. So, they got the woman who owns the boutique or work at the boutique, whatever, start translating this BS while Elizabeth is trying to look a gale. So, the translator is talking, and then here comes the sister-in-law. The sister-in-law saying, listen, I never liked that drink. We never had, we never got a law child. I don't like him. We have had our problems. And this is the first time I've seen him, y'all. Was it two or was it four years? Let me, I put, did I put that down? Hold on. Two years. She said it has been two years since I seen Andre because he got on my nerves so bad. I was like, oh. So the sister-in-law is bashing Andre along with Jen and the mother. And so the sister-in-law was like, I don't even know how um, um, Elizabeth is with them. <laughs> Girl, well, that's true. That's true. She said, I don't understand how Elizabeth can even stay with Andre. He a whole mess. So they're going back and forth bashing Andre, child. And here is Elizabeth coming out of the um, dressing room saying, I can hear y'all. I can hear everything what you're saying. And so Jen was like, hey, we just trying to get some information. Okay? We done found out about that fight. And we just want to know what's up. What is up? And so Elizabeth was like, this is what's up. Okay? I'm going to get married. I'm marrying him. And there's nothing.
nothing that you can do or say about. Okay? And so her and her sister are going back and forth about how you was talking to Andre when he was cutting a shine at the restaurant. And then the sister was like, you left with Andre? You left dad and um, Charlie there? And so she was like, I left him, but I didn't know what was going to happen. I have never seen him act like that. So here comes the sister talking about, well, why did you do that? Why was he doing that? Why is he talking like that to Charlie and dad? Andre, so Elizabeth, she's getting flustered and she says, that's enough. Okay. All right. I handled it the best way I know how to handle it. I said what I said. Okay. I said it and it's over here. Apologize is done. I'm getting married. So, of course, they just going back and forth. Da, da, da. Y'all, I have said this before. What is it that they are going to find out about Andre in Ireland? What do they think they're going to find out? That he done hurt somebody? That he done kidnapped a child? That he done beat the crap out of some woman? What do they think they're going to find out? The information they find out, if they even find out any information from Marcel, is it going to break Elizabeth and, and um... Andre up? No! Elizabeth is going to stay with them! She ain't going anywhere! And again, they're already married! Oh my god! They have a whole family, and here they just cut the shot of her. I was pissed off with Elizabeth's family. Just up there, just carrying on in them people's um, house. Just bashing them. Honey, I was so pissed off at Elizabeth Fellow, honey, if they don't hurry up and have this wedding and take their tail back to the United States, just embarrassing us. Just embarrassing the U.S. of A. Um, all you foreign people who are looking at this, this do not represent all Americans. Mm-mm, mm-mm. This is a special case of Americans. They foolish. Let's move on. All right, let's talk about Usulu and Kalina. <laughs> so as we know, Usulu's mom and sister, they want money, 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 money. Money. So Kalina was like, listen, I need to, to talk to them before we get up out of here. Okay, this has gone on far enough. This has gone on long enough, child. So she meets up with um, Asulu's mom and that sister. What's that sister's name, y'all? Tammy. Well, child, it started off, you know, half of a second good. Okay, kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy, and honey, let the games begin, child. Kaleda said, I want to know why y'all think y'all are privy to our money. Why you think that, you know, y'all can get our money? It's our money. Why do you think that we owe you money? Huh? Huh? So, of course, here comes, you know, the mama and the sister saying it's tradition. It is Samoan edition. You know, this is what we do. We take care of our family. We're poor. Let me repeat that. We take care of our family. We're poor. Then the sister says, listen, I don't even know what's up with you. Your dad is Samoan. You know the deal. Why are you acting like this is new? Your dad knows exactly what we're talking about. And so Kalina said, yeah. Okay. And some of the things that's in Samoan tradition, I don't go for. Okay. Me and my family's different. All right. We're different in that aspect. Okay. We ain't just going to be giving money. All right. So, yes, I'm part Samoan, but with the tradition of throwing people money and just giving money, we don't do that up in my household. That's not how I was raised, child. Period. So, then, so Kalina was like, this is just too much. Y'all are just doing too much. It's just unacceptable. So, then, Asulu's mama out the blue says, just give us money. Give me money. That is all she says. And y'all, she says, this is Asulu's mom. I don't care 
about your kids. I just want money. Y'all, she said it. Tell me I've lied. She said, I don't care about your kids. F your kids. This woman said that about her grandchildren. Now, y'all remember during that Skype conversation when she was all, oh, my grandbabies. Oh, I just love them. I love my grandbabies. I cannot wait to see my grandbabies. Now she said, F my grandkids. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Listen. At that moment, Kalena should have just walked off. She should have just walked off at that moment. And said, F you, you ain't gonna never see my kids. Because see, once you say, I don't care anything about my grandpa, what grandparent would say that? Most of the time, it's the grandparents' love. Grandparents will, honey, fight you over their grandbabies. And here she is saying, I don't care about, my, uh, about those kids awful. How can a woman say that about her grandkids? What did she say about a solo? What's she say about Tammy and the others? What is going on here? So it went from one thing to worse, honey. So then here comes, you know, Sulu talking about that, you know, um, Kalena is uh, lazy, how she don't work for anything, how she needs to find a job because she has a full-time job. She takes her kids to this place, that place, that place, this place, and she's able to send money to, you know, the family and all this bunch of stuff. And so Kalena was like, oh, so I'm lazy? Oh, so I'm lazy because I want to spend time with my children. And so the mama was like, you got your, your parents. Your parents can help you with it, okay? Your parents can help with the bills. Oh, my God. Honey, then the sister said that Kalena done forgot where she come from. You done forgot your raisin. See, you're part Samoan and you're part Caucasian. You done forgot about your Samoan side. See, this is the problem. <laughs> and honey, Kalena said, I don't have time to listen to this. I don't have to listen to this. F you, F your crazy mama, I'm out. So Kalena starts to walk off. And then here comes Tammy lunging at her. Now when she did this motion, here comes Kalena I mean, uh, here comes a Sulu's mama holding her back. And then here comes a Sulu's sister. And then here comes Tammy talking about, when I see you, I'm going to beat you up. When I see you, I'm going to beat you up. I'm like, girl, she right there. <laughs> what are you talking about when you see her? She right there. I mean, the only thing you had to do was this. She was, she was little, she walked by her. She walked by, she had plenty of space and opportunity to grab that head and just, <laughs> we want to see a fight. <laughs> and then she didn't, you know, she was, you know, her mama was holding her back and she was screaming and yelling and tugging. Kalena was just like, <laughs> I said, child, if y'all don't stop it. So Kalena goes home. And she goes and she talks to a Sulu. It's like talking to a 10-year-old, ain't it? I mean, come on. So she's talking to a Sulu. And she's telling the Sulu what went down. And she was like, your mom and your sister is crazy. Okay? They keep talking about money. They said they don't care nothing about the kids. They said my family ain't crap. They said I was lazy. She said, I don't ever, ever, ever want to have anything to do with your family. They are awful. They are God awful. I can't stand it. And so Sula was like, well, it's not that easy. Okay? They steal my family. I cannot believe this is what happened. Okay? I, I just don't know what to say. 
And so then she starts talking about the whole fight. And she says that, you know, the sister lunged at her and tried to, you know, fight her. And she was like, let me tell you something. If she would have touched me, I would have knocked her out. So Asulu had a smirk on his face. Asulu said, what that? You will knock out my sister. And so Kalina said, yeah, I'll knock out your sister. Asulu said, you going to knock out my sister? My, my sister? She said, yeah, I'll knock out your sister. Your sister, four foot eleven. Look at all this. She can't take all this. Bah, bah, bah. I'll knock her out. I done knocked out people in the third grade. And so Asulu said, my sister, you gonna knock out my sister? And she said, what are you trying to say? I can't knock out your sister. And Zulu said, well, my sister knocked you out. See, you can't take my sister. See, my sister four foot eleven, but she will wally mock you. Okay, you can't knock out my sister. We strong. Kalina said, so you said I can't knock out your sister? She said, if your sister would have put her hands on me, I would have knocked her out. Period. <laughs> Y'all, that whole conversation was ridiculous. To see who would be of whom. Don't y'all have bigger problems? Asulu, your whole family is a mess. Kaleida, you married a mess. How did they disrespect the heck out of you? While they were standing there, they could talk about that Kaleida got pregnant on purpose. That Kaleida is brainwashing Asulu because Kaleida is much older. That's the only reason why Asulu is with Kaleida. It's because she got pregnant and she brainwashed her. Girl, you should have busted her in the mouth standing there. You should have busted that mom in the mouth when she said she don't care nothing about your kids. But... I'm not one for violence, so you walked off. That was the mature thing to do. So anyway, then here comes Kalena talking about that she'll beat up a Sulu. And then a Sulu was like, you gonna beat me up. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Then they called each other a-holes and she said that the family was effing crazy. It was crazy. So she goes out there to her sister, because her sister's watching the kids, and then they have a good cry, child. They done got to talking about what happened to Sulu's family, how Sulu was acting, how Sulu's a bum, how she cannot believe that she married a Sulu. She said that she don't know how long this marriage, if this marriage will survive. Kalena, you was warned, honey. You was warned. You was warned by your sister. You was warned by your parents. You was warned by the, vo the viewers. <laughs> Honey, we was all screaming through the TV. Stop it. Mm -mm, this ain't good. You're 31. He's 24. And he acts like he is a teenager. He don't have it in his mind to try to be someone that you want him to be. It just ain't going to happen. A Sulu is so immature, in my opinion. And honey, his family. Absolutely not. Child, what did y'all think about Kalina and a Sulu child? Y'all already know. I'll leave it down below. Oh my God, another long video. Oh shit. <laughs> y'all got me cussing. <sighs> Last and least, Michael and Angela. Y'all, before I get started, let me say a quick prayer. Oh, okay. Y'all, I really despise Angela. Y'all already know this, okay? I can't stay in Broadback. She is really a mean, nasty woman. She's just a nasty woman. I cannot stand her. And it proved how much I disliked her this episode. 
Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing of what happened between Angela and Michael. We've seen it. But what I will do is give you my thoughts on her actions. So, we've seen her walk off. She's mad at Michael. Her um, Michael's Aunt Lydia was like, you sure you want to do this? You sure you want to get go through with this wedding after this? You a whole fool if you do. Here's Michael. I love Angela. I love Angela. I love Angela. I love him. Y'all already know how I feel about Michael. I think Michael is a complete idiot, buffoon, stupido, everything you want to think. Every idiot that you want to even say, that's Michael. That's Michael. So he goes back to take more abuse. Angela was like, I'm done. Michael hadn't even got through the door a good second. I'm done. So let me let me throw some out there, y'all. Let's say the roles was reversed. And let's say that it was Michael. Who have done all these mean things to Angela? Screaming, yelling, disrespecting, throws a cake in her face, cursing. How do you think the reaction would be if the roles were reversed? Huh? How? Huh? I didn't hear y'all. I didn't hear y'all. Huh? Oh. We all know what the reaction would be. So how is it that TOC think that this is appropriate? We have seen it. We have seen Angela verbally abuse Michael, and he takes it. And this episode, she was on one, wasn't she? Cursing and screaming and calling him an ML, calling him a B word. Then it was hands in the face. And then she stands up and she was like, get your hands up, make, make me, make me. This is a 95-year-old grandmother who was on the other end of this table, her fiancé, and she is telling him, make me. Now, what would have happened if he would have went, what would have happened? If he would have knocked her head clear off her shoulders, what would have happened? What would have happened if he would have straightened up her etched sketch chest? Oh my God, he hit her. Oh my God, he put his hands on her. People would have been in an uproar. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm not one for violence. And I don't think a man should hit a woman, but a woman should uh, a woman should hit a man. But at that moment, if he that whole interaction was disgusting, and it was awful. Okay, now when do you start reining it in? Yes, it is for our entertainment, and yes, we do like some good drama. But right here, right now, seeing Angela acting up all the time, how many times has she called off his wedding? How many times has she humiliated Michael? And he takes it in her. I cannot stand Angela. And why does she think that she can get by with this? Why does she think that it's okay for her to treat anybody like this? Especially the man that you so-called love. All that screaming and yelling. Talk about, I'm not going to be submissive. I'm not going to be submissive. You ain't going to make me do what I want to do. Bye, 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 bye. Just like a bull. She is God. Oh, my God. I'm an American. I'm an American. Then she brought Jesus into it. Jesus don't want to be involved in this mess brought back. Here, Angela. Listen here, Angela. You out here talking.
talk about you're the American and you're not going to be submissive and F your culture. What about my culture? Why didn't you marry somebody where you from over there in Side Ditch, Hog Wall of Georgia? Why did you mar marry an uh, American man? Got the American flag out there. Got the Confederate flag on the back of the truck. Why didn't you marry you an American man? How about that? No, you had to go find a Nigerian man on Facebook. You broad back bitch. Don't even start. The reason why you found some Nigerian man who's a puss is because you can't control him. And the minute, the minute that you want him over to the United States, it ain't going to be no 50-50, Michael. She is going to run you into the ground. Okay, instead of you telling her what to do, she's going to tell you what to do and you're going to take it. Because she's doing it now. She's doing it now. But she want to talk about she's not going to bow down to you. But I guarantee you, if you come over here, you will bow down to her. That's it. I can't stand this woman, y'all. I can't stand her. And Michael is an idiot. Angela, Angela. That's all he does is follow behind her. Angela, 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 Angela. Stupid. So then, of course, it's the next day. She got to talk about she done, she packing her stuff. She's getting her clothes. You know, the wedding's off. Blah, blah, blah for the 800,000th time. So then, here comes the next day. Angela sitting there. She all swolled up. And then here comes, she done hired a translator. Okay? And did y'all did y'all hear how rude she was to the translator? The translator was just sitting there. She was like, hey, don't talk to him. Don't look at him. You look at me. You look at me. Don't look at him. It's me. It's me. Oh my gosh. So the translator was like, all right, you know, cool. So here comes mama. And so, of course, here comes Angela. Angela wants mama to know that she's not going to be submissive to Michael. She also wants mama to know that she can't carry no baby. She can't tote no baby because she's 108 and she's evil and she's mean, no hateful bitch. So then, here is, Lord, y'all excuse me, y'all just said two B words. So then, um, they're explaining it, translating it, all that to mama. And then mama's like, Michael, how you feel about it? Michael was like, I'm good with it. Mama said, okay. Mama said she cool with um, Angela not being submissive and Angela can't carry a child. Mama gave her consent again. Then what's the point? What was the point? I tell you. Is Michael even going to come over here, y'all? Is Michael over here? Y'all know I don't follow these people, but I'm giving y'all this permission this one time. Is Michael and Angela over here? If Michael is not over here now, and they are on another epi another season of 90 Day Fiance, uh, what are they doing now, Happily Ever After Part 50 Cent? I don't care. I am not going to talk about Angela and Michael ever again. I'm not going to do it. They are absolutely disgusting. And I, I just can't do it. She pisses me off so bad I can't stand her. I cannot. She is by far the worst person in all of the reality shows. <laughs> She's awful. She's an awful woman. And I can't talk about her anymore. She makes me sick. She is so terrible. But anyway, that's it, y'all. That is it. Alright. What did y'all think about the episode? Leave it down below. And y'all know the routine. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And to my new subscribers, 
Welcome to the family. All right, guys, that's it. Until next time, friends.